of our knees Hooked that ball past Ariola It was way too quick for the Ariola And the ball chomp Oh my god Cavani's hooked that ball past Ariola. It was way too quick for the Ariola. I'm on a boat char for the urban a poach char. Three game bands still did it for the poach char. Then Pogba came with a rocket launcher with a curler. Aim for the top corner like Pogba. Man, I'm a game changer. Does he start next game? That's a no three. No. And we're back again with another show. It's your boy Firms, and this is the OT99 banter room where opinions get shared and smoke gets served. Now let's get into it, my peoples. Let's get into it. So I'm going to talk about Manchester United. Obviously, I'm going to talk about Liverpool. I'm going to talk about a bit about Arsenal. That you know they're relevant, but I just you know I'll talk about them. Even though it's a United show, you know, you know the connections there. If you're an old school United fan like me, you'll know that the connections there with these two teams. So occasionally their names get dropped into it. I'm going to talk about the transfer window because we are in January and we've got a week left and I've got some important news to tell you. Now, first of all, let's start off with Manchester United against Fulham. Black, look, that game was, you know what? People looked at Fulham and thought, I said this in my last vlog, remember I said this? People looked at Fulham and thought, you know, oh, it's going to be an easy walkover, like we got Fulham, like it's going to be easy. You know, they don't score, whatever it is. I said, you know what, that's going to be a tough game. Because whether they try to score, and they did score, whether they score or not, I think the main issue is that since they went to five at the back, since Scott Parker put five defenders at the back, Fulham's been a different team. And it's not the team that you once knew earlier on in the season. Over the last five, six, you know, games or so, Fulham has been a very resilient, hard-working sort of tight knit unit team they're a team that is hard to break down now and united's always had issues earlier on anyway or predating bruno of breaking down teams so every time we get a test i'm a bit like worried but i'm glad to see that we're getting through these tests and we're making it out on the other side you know it shows a remarkable improvement do you know and i'm just so happy that since we've got bruno do you know like we're seeing a massive improvement in terms of like getting over the line and, and beating these teams you know last season was you know getting results from the big teams now this season we're getting results from the sort of um, teams outside of the top six which is proven to be more important now more than ever so um i'm happy that we got that win man but let me get into it so i'll start off with the negatives anyway so some of the negatives is like that first goal that we conceded against lookman i'm like one besaka lookman no i'm joking I mean, but, but Juan Basaka though, do you know what frustrates me about defenders? It's not that, you know, you can't get caught like lacking and be caught like, you know, offside and get caught, you know, on, uh, you know, guys are strikers are playing off the shoulder. You know, you'll get caught out sometimes. But Juan Basaka has the whole field. He has the whole field. He has that line of sight where he's right at the edge and he can see across, do you know. You're playing Lookman on side. Why are you sleeping? Do you know what I mean? And what that's cause now is that, you know, Lookman ends up being on a one-on-one -on -one with the Gale. And he hits it low and hard and smashes it into the bottom corner. I was just like, Juan Bissaka, man, please, like, keep your discipline. Stay in line with the Maguires. Stay in line with Bay. Stay in line with Shaw. If anything, you're so far away. The best, the most you can do is make sure you keep that line. Do you know what I mean? You're playing these guys on side. You're playing Lookman on side. And I'm just like, why are you doing that? You know what I mean? Stay focused. Stay focused. So that was our one negative. The other negative was um, conceding goals early again. United are conceding goals early in these games. We always do. And it doesn't seem to matter who we're playing. We're conceding goals early. Like this is in the first five minutes or so. And the thing about United is that I think with this game in particular, I think that like, we, we slacked a little bit in a sense where you know, when we're pumped up for it, like, against Leeds and all of these teams, like, when we're pumped up, you know, we tend to, like, we tend to be more on it. We tend to be more, sort of, focused and aware. And we've gone through this many, many times. We've gone through this many, many times with other teams that like, they'll keep conceding in the first half. And I feel like we should have known this now. We should have tried to fix this. Why do we keep conceding early? And we're giving ourselves a mountain to climb. And when that goal went in, and my first thought was just like, okay, we're down again, we're doing it the hard way as usual, we're up against a resilient team, do you know, like, this is going to be stress, and it was stress to a degree, but you know what, when that goal went in, something kind of changed, to 
our benefit, which is good, because we became more on it, more hungry. You know, our heads didn't drop. You know, last season, this is a thing where, you know, when we go down a game, it's very difficult for us to overturn and get a win. You know, overturn it and get a win. Do you know what I mean? The best will be getting draws if that part. I'm now liking it that we're getting a win. So that's a benefit. Anyway, again, Martial and Greenwood. Look, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but Martial and Greenwood, again, you know, Greenwood was non existent on a right. You know, um, the goal threat is non existent on a right. And I, I know like Greenwood's had a you know iffy start to the season with whatever happened with him, you know, like in the papers and all of that stuff. And, but he's had enough game time now where you just hope to start to see little signs, you know. He's not getting enough shots off. The shots that he does get off is getting blocked. It's not troubling the keeper. I would like to see Greenwood get more into the game. And it's because probably we're playing him out wide. And he needs to be someone more direct in the central, like central position. But you know, as it stands, if you're playing three up top, four, two, three, one, then it's very difficult for him to play a central position when you've got Cavani and then you've also got Martial ahead of him. But I would really like to see like um, Greenwood starting to play more through the central position because I think that's where he's most effective. That's where I think he'll get a lot more goals. And with Martial again, I'm still hoping for Martial to come into his own. You know, get some more goals on a score sheet because, in the quite, in actual fact, you know, that brings me on to like the likes of like, you know, Pogba. He's been on form for the last few weeks, like, and you know, it's been it's been needed and well timed, you know, because, you know, look, last season we had Greenwood, Rashford, and Martial. Between them, they got like sixty plus goals. Martial's dropped off, Greenwood's dropped off, Rashford's got a few, and you know, if we're still dependent on these guys, we'll be struggling right now. Luckily, what we've seen is we've got, you know, Pogba that stepped up. He's chipping in our performances. He's chipping in with them winning goals. You've got Bruno who's chipping in as well. And you've got um, Cavani, most importantly, that's also chipping in. So, um, I'm just happy that, you know, the likes of your Pogba's. And his goal, his goal yesterday was amazing, man. That screamer, man, from the edge of the box was just a joke. And not many guys can score goals like that in a Premier League, which shows why Pogba, you know, he's when he's on form, when his head's in the game, he's one of the best players in the world. He's one of the best players in the world. I mean, there's not many you can compare him with, you know, your De Bruyne's or whatever it is. There's not many, you know, there's attributes that he's got that many hasn't got, you know. And when you've got Pogba like that playing for your team, without the noise of Mino Raiola, without sort of the comments that Pogba makes at times, you know, then it's perfect. And I think like when Pogba's in a team that's performing well, he's amazing. But when it's not going so well, it's challenging. And what we need to do is keep Pogba happy, you know, keep, you know, stick to winning ways. And then hopefully, you know, come the end of the season, he will sign the thing or he will move on. But I think United at the moment is in a win-win position with Pogba because, you know, some say, you know, Pogba, you know, he's, he's playing for the move. You know, to Juve or Braille or PSG or wherever it is. And what I say to that is, you know, it's a win-win because we're getting the best out of Pogba. Right now, all we could ask for in a season like this, where it's a good opportunity to win the Premier League or challenge for the title, at least sustain a good title challenge come like Champions League for sure. You've got a guy that's playing to leave, then we're getting the best out of him regardless. It's not something that we need to worry about now for him signing contracts or what's going to happen with his future. Right now, he's playing and he's playing well and we need to we need him to be playing well i'd rather have a pep popper that's playing to leave than a popper that's upset grumpy causing sort of discord and um, disharmony in our in our squad and you know not turning up because we need it right now and if he needs if he wants that move then he needs to be on top of his game which he's doing so regardless of what people say i'm still happy it's a win-win in my in my books and i with bruno Bruno's one of them guys that people are saying, you know, he's tired, he's, you know, he's been playing non-stop, you know, we're running him through the ground. But you saw in that game against Fulham yesterday that Bruno was, throughout the game, he was active. You saw his shot that got Oriola had an amazing save, he pulled off an amazing save, you know, with um, um, uh, Bruno's long ranger. He also, like, pulled off a nice um, save when Bruno whipped in the ball to... Cavani, Cavani got his head on it and then and then Ariola made that save. You know, there was plenty of that. Bruno was heavily involved and to me, didn't look like a guy that was tired that needed to be rested or benched. I think like, you know, if it's not one thing, if it's another, you know, it's like Bruno don't turn up to big games. Bruno's now tired. Bruno, 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 Bruno. All trying to put Bruno off his game. 
leave Bruno alone. Bruno's doing what he's doing, do you know what I mean? He's contributing to the team and he's getting results. At the end of the day, you know, we're top of the league. But anyway, let me move on, let me move on. And Cavani, man, his goal was just what I like seeing. I love seeing a poacher's goal just as much as I love seeing Paul, Bob, Paul Pogba's goal. Do you know, we've got too many guys that pull off these flary goals, you know, the Rashfords and Marshalls, where it's just a spectacular. We, like, but we need someone that can get an easy goal, and Cavani does that. He makes life a whole lot easier when he gets a poacher's goal. You know, we're back in winning ways, 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one. I love it. And Cavani, man, just give him another, just give him the extension now. Let him sign that contract, you know what I mean? And let's start thinking about, you know, spending our budget elsewhere outside of a striker, because... For me, he's certain and he should be starting every single game. Look, moving on. So, Man United has gone 17 games, away games, undefeated. Now, we've matched the 99 team's away goal record. Shout out to OT99, I had to throw that in there. We matched the record. Now, what does that say for a guy that's a PE teacher, a guy with no tactics? What does it say? He matched the 99 team's away record. Take it in, man. Look, I'm just saying, like, stats are stats in it. Numbers don't lie. He's matched the record. So we're 17 away games unbeaten. And you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm happy right now. I'm happy right now. We're progressing, you know, in the league. We're doing well. And long may it continue, man. And you are uh, talking about away records. Let's talk about Liverpool's away record. Because Liverpool went three years. 68 games unbeaten away from home and lord knows i wanted it to be manchester united that took that record but you know what it's cool because you know what's even more funnier that burnley took that record burnley took that record away from you guys and you know what it gives us opportunity to catch that record and just smash it to pieces <laughs> but you know what let's talk about that game though the liverpool and burnley game let me just get sidetracked i have to talk about it so the Liverpool and Burnley game was funny, man. It's like, Liverpool still hasn't clicked up top. They still haven't clicked, you know. Um, you had Ashley Barnes just running off the, like, I always, as the longer that game went on, the longer that Liverpool didn't put that ball in the net, I always thought, you know what, there's a small danger here that, you know, Burnley can come away with something. I wasn't expecting them to win the game, but I was expecting them to get at least a draw. Um, but the more I saw, you know, that Ashley Barnes, like, hugging that line, running off the shoulder, getting those three balls, like, getting those three balls in, whether it be over the top or off to the feet, I thought, mm, something could happen here. And lo and behold, it did. Lo and behold, it did. Um, you know, it was one-on-one -on -one with a keeper. He got there first. Ariola, um, what's his name? Say Ariola. Um, Alisson came out, tried to make the save, missed the ball completely. Clip Ashley Barnes and it led to a penny, do you know? And then he, he comfortably tucked it away, you know? And he, even though, you know, uh, he gets the right way, you know, Alisson gets the right way, but, you know, the, the, the penny was nicely placed, you know, and it was 1 0. And this Liverpool's strange because this is the same team that, you know, smashed. Was it Palace 7 0? It's like they saved all the goals up for that and no more goals are coming. Everyone's trying. Um, and, you know, they got, you know, they brought guys on. I see them switch it up, you know. They started Shaqiri, you know. They started um, Origi. Ugh. And Origi's miss. It's unforgivable. It's unforgivable. But you know what? It's also understandable because if you've got a team that's low on confidence, if you've got a team where, you know, look, Liverpool is a team that don't really rotate their players. They're being forced to bring in other names now because of lack of form of their current existing team. They're forced, they're forced to bring in players now because you've got Fabinho and you've got Hendo playing centre-back now where you have to bring in different midfielders or whatever. So what we saw is the introduction of Oxley chamberlain you know, for injury issues or whatnot. He's, you know, he's been out, but, you know, he gets game time here and there. And then we saw Origi and we saw Shakiri. But these guys are guys that are not match fit. These guys are not guys that are really getting any game time. Look at how many minutes Shakiri's played this season. Origi, you know, Oxley chamberlain It's not a lot. Um, and when you bring them into games like this where your team's already low on confidence and low on um, sort of form and expect them to, you know, pull things out of the bag um, from the get-go, it's not always the case, you know. 
and our Arsenal and Arteta, you know, flipped up a team. They brought in Smith Rowe, the youngsters, and they managed to start getting some momentum and getting games. They're about four or five games unbeaten now. But it's not always the case that that happens, you know. And I think Liverpool's going to have to give these guys time, give Shaqiri's, the Origi's, or if you want to still stick with them, and Oxley chamberlains time. And, you know, eventually they'll get match fit, they'll get sharpness, and they can contribute, you know. Um, and Jota's still on a mend. He's still going to be out for some time, but, you know, Liverpool can get back into it, you know, they still look dangerous, they still look, you know, hungry and we've got them, they've got an opportunity, do you know what I mean, to, to, you know, we've got them again, F, uh, what was it, FA Cup, so, you know, it's an opportunity for them to show what they're made of, you know, but United's going to rotate the squad, obviously, but we're still going to have a strong enough squad to deal with Liverpool, so let's see the outcome of that anyway, man, let's see the outcome of that, but yeah, United is two points clear, so we're two points clear now in the Premier League, City's right behind us. Um, but you know there's some, been some interesting news so City's behind us with a game in hand but there's some interesting news that broke out today so City City just confirmed so Pep just confirmed that De Bruyne you know if you watched the game against Villa you would have known that uh, De Bruyne was substituted he came off injured or he was injured anyway I didn't watch the game myself personally but he, he came off injured limping he pulled his brain um, and no, he's pulled his hammy, sorry, he pulled his hamstring. And, you know, Pep came out today and said he's out for four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. Look, De Bruyne has been City's talisman. You know, where they've had no striker, you know, you know, he's been the guy. He's been played in more advanced positions. He's been contributing heavily with, with assists and creativity for City's team, so it's a huge blow. If there's any player you don't want to lose, you don't want to lose De Bruyne. Uh, yes, Gundogan has stepped up. Yes, he's performing well, but De Bruyne, everyone knows, if you know anything about knowing anything, De Bruyne is the guy that you don't want to lose from your team, and he's out for six weeks. So the impact that could have in a title race could be massive, 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 because City didn't look like a team that was going to drop points anytime soon. They looked a team that was basically back to the old city, invincible. And this could be a spanner in a work. So we'll just have to wait and see. And you can pet, pull it out the bag, grind out the results, keep it going. Do you know, or is he gonna drop more points? We'll have to see. But he's got some big games coming up. I think Arsenal might be included in one of the, those games as well. So we'll see what happens. Another big sort of injury news as well is Leicester. Leicester's team. So Jamie Vardy again. So Brendan Rodgers came out. You know, today and said that Jamie Vardy is going to be out. He's going to be out for about a few weeks. A few weeks is probably, I don't know, three weeks or more. Um, he had a hernia, a minor hernia, hernia injury. Apparently, they've been putting it on for a while. Um, but now they, they couldn't hold off for too long anymore. And now it's the perfect opportunity for them to get the surgery out of the way in this sort of window. So he will miss a few games. But it shouldn't be too crucial. And they should be able to have him back in time. You know to make sort of a significant difference but again that's a big loss when you're talking Leicester you don't want to be saying Vardy and associating him with injuries when you're talking City the same with De Bruyne when you're talking Man United right now it's the same with Bruno it's the same with Pogba you just don't want to associate the names so United's got a good clear sort of bit of health and I hope it stays that way and I think the rotating is paying off we can see that Oli, you know, Mr. No Tactics, he's rotating his squad. And the injuries is just, you know, minuscule. So, again, shout out PE teacher, man. Shout out PE teacher. Moving on to the latest news in the transfer window. Talk about Palestri. So, I've been hearing in the news, you know, that Palestri is seeking a loan move. You know, and his representatives are seeking a loan move for Palestri. He's looking at La Liga. The Liga to get that move, which is looking exciting, you know, because we all wanted to see a lot more Palestri by now, hoping to see a cameo. And it was an unfortunate um, incident when he got COVID because we thought we was going to see Palestri make his debut in the first team against Watford, I think it was. Um, but yeah, we got COVID, so that sort of pushed back his debut. So I'm glad that he's going to get the loan move. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm glad that he's going to get the loan move to. Um, some team in the league yet yeah, yet to be announced. So um, wherever he goes, I'll be keeping an eye on him. I'm sure you'll be keeping an eye on him as well, um, and just see his progression. I'll see if he lives up to what you know we all hope. 
and want from him as United fans. Now Diallo, Diallo's been training with the first team. Um, you know, he's, he seems to be gelling well with the first team, um, getting along well with the senior members. Um, it seems like his debut is going to be fast-tracked sooner than what maybe originally thought. Um, he seems to be impressing social in training and impressing the rest of his teammates. So uh, hopefully, you know, Diallo over the next, you know, few games we get to see him and see what he's about, man. But he's another exciting talent, you know, out of... Um, Italian football and you know he's got good good sort of anyone that's watched him as you know complimented his game said that he's a you know a good great talent um, and yeah we just hope to you know we hope that we realize that you know uh, at United obviously I still want to get Jaden Sancho and I want Diallo and Jaden Sancho to be competing for that right you know um, you know there's rumors you know Dan James could be on a loan move next summer potentially you know Lingard is you know he's another one so he, he, he's been linked with um, Sheffield United um, but he does not want to go there he's holding out for a better offer but you know we'll, you know that right hand side you know, it, it just hasn't been occupied fully yet by an established winger so we need to make sure that we get someone certified so Diallo and Sancho competing for that side will be perfect because you know Matt is pushing on and Donny van der Beek he can play there but he's not a winger naturally you know we want someone with pace and skill that can whip in crosses and yes you know the likes of your Pogba, your matters your donny van der beats can play in that position i think for the long term going forward with the style of play that we want to be playing um we don't want someone like that playing out wide you know we want someone to be able to you know traditionally you know, we had our gigs you know our beck and you know, you know whip, whipping in crosses we don't want that from what we yeah we don't want it from donny or or any other guy, you know, we want it from Diallo, hopefully, and Sancho. Last but not least, and this isn't related to Man United, but this is news that is trending, is Odegaard. Now, Odegaard has been linked with Arsenal. Um, and this is a guy that had a lot of, you know, bars around him when he was young, when he was just coming in. I think when he was probably like 14, 15, I was hearing his name, and every sort of European team was after Odegaard, you know. He was linked with big money and huge wages for such a young guy. I mean, I was crying for him at the club. I think there was not really a buzz like that for a young, a youth player in a very, very, very long time. He was tipped to be sort of the next Messi. Like, it was, it was that big. The buzz was that big. So, Pep was sort of like, you know, I want him at Bayern when he was at Bayern. You know, I'll turn him into the world's best. I'll, you know, it was that much expectation of it. And it just didn't quite live up to expectation for some reason. I don't know. He got brought into Real Madrid to be training with the first team. He didn't quite push on. You know, he got he, he had his moves, he had his loan moves, it didn't work out. You know, ended up like Royal Soul Shedad now. And he's doing okay, Do you know. I think you know six goals, four assists, or something along those lines anyway for Royal Soul Shedad this season. Um and he's doing well then. But now, you know, um he's gonna be moving to Arsenal, and I don't know if that's a good move or a bad move because you found your feet in a club when you're getting your game time and you're having a decent season, now you're going to go to Arsenal and are you going to be a starter or is it going to be Smith Row competition and balance, do you know? I don't know, man, but, you know, however it is, you know, Odegaard, you know, he's a decent guy. He will add, you know, creativity to a squad of like Arsenal and um, maybe a bit more balance. Um, is, he the, is he the guy that worries me? Is he a guy that I'm like, shaking in the boots about? Not really. I mean, he could come and do well at Arsenal, but, He's not a guy that has the same sort of buzz as it did all those years ago. He's not a guy that I'm worried about. Um, he's had multiple moves in different teams and he hasn't set the world alight. So, I mean, he's still young though. He's still 22, but I wouldn't... I'm not worried about him now. But, you know, the loan deal, I'm hearing a couple of rumours that it's an 18-month deal. Some other people are saying, you know, until summer. Um, I'm not sure if there's an obligation to buy or not. So deals are still being worked through and we should hopefully hear a bit more about that, you know, in the next few days. But um, I just thought I'd talk about Odegaard because it's one of those that news that was just buzzing, buzzing around there. So I thought I'd bring it to you. But, you know, in terms of Man United, um, there's going to be no more incomings I'm hearing. It's just more about outgoings, you know, I'm trying to get players out. So like I said, Rojo finalising that. Potentially Romero, if not that, then it will be in the summer. And then, um, yeah, and we take it from there, you know, we take it from there and we push on for next season. I think the big deals, the 
big moves will be made in the summer. Obviously, you know that we're fighting for Oppo Bacano, but you know, his priority I'm hearing is Bayern Munich, and Bayern Munich really want him. Um, but you know, I think our main priority in the summer is going to be Jaden Sancho, unless something you know, happens. I think that we've given him so many promises, he really wants to come. I think it affected his season. I still think there's that gentleman agreement between Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Sancho. They've had many conversations, and I don't see that changing. Now, I think we're still going to go in for him. Think we're still gonna bid whatever it be, six or sorry, sixty, but it's probably gonna be about you know eighty million upwards now, now that a year's gone down, it's got two years left. Um maybe eight eighty million till maybe ninety will be enough to get him, ninety million. Um but we'll see. But I really do want that right wing to be taken care of once and for all. So as much as we need to improve other positions in the team, like right back, centre back, DM striker potentially i still think that that position of right wing has been so vacant for so many years and we finally need to you know put that position to bed put it to rest and move on and i think there's only one person that can do that in the market at the moment and that's Jaden sancho anyway that's me done guys until next time